When you talk about, you know, changing things about your life or changing anything about your life, what is the most basic thing that you kind of talk about? Okay, so I think, uh, can I say we talk about choices, right? Every, when we, when we talk about how my, you know, the reason why I'm here today is because I have um, made certain choices in my life and uh, that has kind of made me a public figure and made me successful to a certain extent and that's why I'm standing here talking to you about how do you flip the script and my first point and the point of this whole, the, the topic that I'm actually going to speak about today is freedom of choices. How many of you sitting here actually think you truly have the freedom to choose? Can I have some hands? Can I see some hands in the air? Whoever thinks so. Yeah, you guys think you're truly free to choose everything about your life at every point? Yeah? Yes? No? I'll talk about me, okay? I personally think, I truly believe that I'm absolutely free to choose everything in my life. So, when I say everything, okay, uh, I'll, I'll take a few examples and tell you how this um, idea of choice kind of works, okay? So do we choose our parents? Do we choose our parents? Do the parents choose us? We don't choose our parents, okay? We don't choose our siblings, we don't choose our relatives. And we all know how tough it can be living with them, dealing with them on a day-to-day -day basis can be, right? Secondly, okay, now uh, I'll talk about success. I believe success chooses you. You do not choose success. Yeah? So success, I also say, is, a, is actually a fluke. It can or cannot happen to you. It may or may not happen to you. On the other hand, what you do choose is excellence. There is something in three years about you know, pursuing excellence, right? And not success. Am I right about that? Do you guys remember? And I completely agree with that, okay? Now let's talk about, you know, all of us have certain passions in life. There, there are things we just love doing. Like, I love acting. So I didn't really choose my passion. My passion chose me, but what I did choose was, I chose to pursue that passion. And that's the reason I'm standing here today. Okay, and um, so while I was talking, going back to your parents and your family and all of that, while we do not choose our parents and our families and all of that, what we can choose and should choose is our attitude towards them. So attitude is completely and always a matter of choice. I know you have heard this before, maybe a million times. But trust me guys, it's true to the T. Attitude is the greatest choice you have. And you have to make changes and choices about your attitude towards everyone and everything around you every second of your life. I'm going to talk a little bit about my, you know, when I, the kind of house I grew up in and all of that. Now, uh, my dad was in the Navy and uh, uh, while, you know, so I was growing up and in third, in second standard, I decided to play badminton and my parents allowed me to pursue that. So I was given a choice to pursue it. Uh, when I grew up a little more, when I, you know, while I was in, I was in school and I loved badminton so much, I was free to choose sports over studies most of the times. Wow, my parents allowed me that. When after 10th I had to choose a stream for myself, I'm like, okay, it's gonna be science. My parents allowed me that. Uh, after 12th I wanted to do whatever, I wanted to do BMS, Bachelor's in Management Studies. My parents allowed me that. After that I'm like, you know what, I think I want to act. I want to pursue acting as a career. My parents allowed me that. 
And years later, I said, this is the guy I want to get married to. And I was allowed that too. So while it seems like, you know, wow, I have had a life full of, you know, my parents were, my parents were amazing. They still are and they always will be. I was allowed choices at the macro levels. What I didn't have. You know, it's, it's honestly, it's, a, it's this freedom of choice that I talk about. It is, a, it is a concept that has come to my understanding and realization very, very recently. I would say about two years. So it's a very, while it's a new, very new concept to me, I, while growing up, I didn't even know that I had a choice to actually choose all along. Not just these major decisions of life, which seems like they are life changing. Yes, they are. They kind of decide, you know, your, uh, your life path at a very macro level. I don't know what else to, what, what are the word to use for it. But I'll tell you what really matters. What really matters are those choices, those small, small choices that you make every moment on a daily basis. And that, I will come to what is, what is the most, you know, what is the lowest or what is the most important choice you have. I'll come to that later, but again, again I bring to your notice the word attitude, right? Talk about freedom. Uh, what also comes with freedom is anybody? Responsibility. Very, very right. With great freedom comes great responsibility. And trust me, the freedom to choose is a huge, huge, huge freedom. And with that, comes an equally huge responsibility to choose correctly. Now what do I mean by choosing correctly? Um, I'm sure of this because I, I mean, what I'm, whatever I'm going to say now, I'm quite sure of this when I say this, that most of you think like this because I have all my life till I said, till two years back I realized that no. There is another way of being. There is, I can choose whoever I want to be, whatever I want to be. I think we all believe, we are all made to believe that whatever we are born with is what we will die with. So a lot of people believe that, you know what, I'm born a certain way, with certain traits, with certain qualities, with certain characteristics, good, bad and ugly and this is how it's going to be till the end of my life. But I have news for you. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way at all. Why? Because you have the freedom of choice. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, you have the freedom of choice at every single step of your life. You know, we, and by the way, we are all choosing, mostly unconsciously, sometimes subconsciously, and rarely, very, very rarely, consciously. So that's the only difference, but we are all choosing all the time. So coming back to how, you know, let me tell you that how many of you think you kind of know who you are? Anyone? Okay, we have a few people who think they know who they are, okay? Now this idea of this is who I am, it sounds amazing. It sounds so spiritual and so like, oh my God, you know who you are? I don't. I really don't, who, I don't, really don't know who I am. Why? Because most of the times, who you think you are, what you think you are, is not your own definition. To begin with, it, it's, it's made of all those ideas put by, put in your head, again, consciously, subconsciously, unconsciously by people around you, your parents, beginning with your parents. 
teachers, your friends, you know, everybody in your society, they just fill you with ideas of who you are, which is again based on their ideas of who you should be or, or who they are. So it's all, it's all so messed up that it's, it's nothing but ideas and conditioning that, that you, you know, that we start making, putting together and think and start believing from a very early age that this is who we are. But you're not. So every time, every time you have a choice to make, every time you have an opportunity, I consider every choice, whenever you are put in a spot of choice, I, I see that only as an opportunity for you to go beyond who you think you are, but actually be who you really want to be. And that will take some work, that will take a lot of work. Because we are all, because we are all living in our comfort zones. It's very comfortable to just go with what my parents think about me, what my husband thinks about me, what my friends think about me. Yeah, you know what, yeah, I think it's, maybe this is who I am. What really takes work is to take the responsibility on your shoulders for creating step by step, moment by moment, the person you really want to be. And that is very scary. You know why? Because the choices of that are limitless. You cannot put it in a box. It's not like, oh, I have 10 things to choose from. You have the universe, you have the world to choose from. You can be who you want to be, who you don't want to be every second of your day. And when I talk about this, the most micro level at which, you know, when you start, suppose you start, you know, working, suppose you take my, whatever I'm sharing with you today, a little seriously, and you start, even start thinking about this, and you become slightly aware of, you know, next time you are put in a spot of a clear choice. You know, initially, it will be difficult for you to really see um, the chances you are getting to actually choose for yourself. Because as I said, we are used to very macro choices. Even to go to a restaurant and say, you know what, uh, I think I want to eat Chinese, no, maybe Indian. Even that's a choice, right? And you're making it very, mostly very unconsciously. Why? Because it's based on what your mind is used to, what your taste buds are used to, what, what you like. What, does your, what do your senses enjoy? So it's, it's something like, it's as simple as um, if you really had to make lifestyle choices, if you really had to just become healthier, you know, than the little unhealthy you, you will be making those choices one after another because you have a goal. You want to be healthy. So it will no more be about, this is what I want to eat. It will be about, this is what I need to eat. So from once, the list of which is unending, your life will start, probably start coming down to what you really need. Yeah, so when, I, when I'm talking about the most, you know, which is the, the, actually the first thing that we all should be working on, but it kind of will come in the end because it's so micro, it's so, it's so intangible that once you are done with the tangible stuff, once you are done making choices, you know, for the tangible stuff, you'll kind of start moving down the ladder and you'll come to the base and the base is made of thoughts. Some of you must have heard about this, how, how powerful thoughts are. And again, it's very scary. It's very scary for me. But, I mean, I have kind of... And the thing is, the more you start being aware of how much of a choice you have every second, the more scary it gets. Because now, you don't have anybody to blame. You can't blame your parents. You can't blame your teachers. You can't blame your friends. You can't blame your girlfriends, boyfriends. You can't blame your bosses, your, you know, the politics, the government. The society, the nation, maybe your dog, 
you have nobody to blame. And that, while that should empower us, it actually should. Imagine, we keep talking about freedom of this and freedom of that. When you really have freedom, which, which doesn't need to be given by anybody else outside of you, we will tend to shy away from the responsibility of it, the burden of it, because it is a huge responsibility. Okay, so now while we talk about uh, choices, you know, uh, there is a debate always, right, about free will and fate, right? And we all kind of get stuck in, but how much is written and, you know, how much I have a choice, you know, over... So, I'm again not going to get into this whole free will and fate debate because I haven't been able to figure that out completely myself as well. But I feel that, um, so your fate is like something, you know, where some things are set, you know, those, those major, uh, uh, what do you say, posts of your life are kind of set. Uh, your free will is the choice I'm talking about. Free will is something that completely uh, explains itself. Free will. You are free to will whatever you want in your life. And having said that, I am going to go back to the attitude part. Um, you know, so I kind of had, I mean, when this TEDx thing came to me, a small example. Uh, and I was like, okay, I mean, I was in the middle of other things and all of that. And um, I was like, okay, I'm supposed to speak, like stand on stage and speak in like front of how many ever people. That doesn't sound like a great idea because you know what? I am better at like a, like an interactive session, like, like a question answer session. I can't like sit down and write on a topic, you know, like the old, you know, like school days and whatever. So I was like very resistant to it because I'm like, karu, nahi karu. And then I just, uh, so, so I'm going to come to a point once I've told you the story. So, and I said, uh, you know what, let's do it. Why? Because there is something that I'm scared of. Because there is something that I'm resisting here. Again, question answer thing is my comfort zone. You ask a question, I'll answer it. And I'll answer it so well. But this is kind of new for me now. You know? So the moment I caught myself resisting something or, or you know, being scared of something, I said, now I need to do this. I just need to do this to be able to get over it, to go beyond it. And that's exactly what is happening right now. I feel so comfortable standing on stage and talking to you guys. And after I go from here, I'm going to be like, bring it on. Whoever calls me for a speech, for a, to stand up and talk, I'll be like, yes, let's do it. So when I, when I, you know, I talk about this because I'm speaking about a very important thing, which is fear. Now, you know, love and fear are pretty much the two things we operate our lives on. We either choose out of love or we choose out of fear. Every time you are put in a spot where you have to make smallest of the choices and biggest of the choices, start with smallest. It will be easier, you know, when you, when you are facing your fears, facing resistance. Small is a good idea. So whenever you are put in a spot like that, think. Firstly, see if you're coming from a space, why are you choosing this and not choosing that or vice versa? And what are your reasons? Are you coming from love? Are you coming from fear? And if you are coming from fear, and if you give it a little more thought and think about, okay, this is who I am today. This is who I am right now. Do I want to be someone else? Do I want to be something else? Do I want to be better than who I am right now? And do I want to make a choice based on that decision? And if the answer is yes, look into that fear. Where is that fear coming from? Where is that resistance coming from? And if it does really scare you, I would really suggest 
most of the times, you know, after of course, as I said, you know, if it's, if it's your choice, try and go into that fear. Because the moment you look the face, look the fear in the eye, it magically disappears. You will feel stronger, braver, freer. And talking about um, also bringing an attitude of gratitude. It's really an attitude. While you have everything or while you think you don't have anything, just bringing in that attitude, which is again a matter of choice. If you have the attitude of gratitude towards everything you actually have. And trust me, when you sit down, when you really sit down and start counting your blessings versus what's not right in your life, I think it's, you know, the blessing score is going to be going to just be much more than the other part. So start counting your blessings, develop, choose an attitude of gratitude and uh, just by being more aware of how much freedom you have actually to choose. Create yourself, create the world around you little by little, step by step and uh, just be a better version of yourself every single day. Love and loads of love and blessings to all of you and thank you once again for having me here.